your direct care for the Homeless Act. Yeah. Um, obviously, we know that homelessness is a growing problem around the country, but particularly here in Oregon. Um, it, I, I'm interested by a bunch of different things, and I'll let you kind of explain it a little bit more. But one is that I don't think many, many people think we need more people to help homeless people is kind of one of the facets of this, right? Absolutely. And I think kind of just to take one step back, what you mentioned, the reason that I'm focused on this is because Oregon is in such dire need of some answer or working toward an answer that's something that we haven't tried or, you know, we've been, you know, more money or more time, but we still need, I think, to think outside the box. So that's one reason. The other reason is because you said it's across the country as well. And uh, some of my colleagues here, this is something I talk about, and they're like, yes, it's affecting us as well. So I think this will be a bill that's going to not only help Oregon, but it, it might be something, you know, important to address for the entire country as we're all experiencing homelessness and drug addiction and mental health crisis. You know, it's kind of a faceted, multifaceted bill that we're going to try to touch on all three. Um, what you mentioned is the providers or the, you know, uh, treatment you know, the caregivers and, and where do we find those people? Oftentimes, you know, they can't, there's not enough of them, one, two, to get out on the street. So the component of this that I think is unique is the street medicine part where, you know, how do we meet these uh, people who are suffering from mental illness or drug addiction and homelessness where they are? We often hear that term, meet them where they are. Well, you know, it, it's true. We can build all the homes that we want, all of the facilities, but if we cannot understand and diagnose their uh, either mental health or, or drug addiction or both, we have to go out to them, try to triage where they are, what exactly, what services they do need, and then, you know, then get them into stabilized housing. So we needed a provider for that. And one of the pieces of this bill that I think is unique is also um, possibly a reimbursement for these providers to, to take the time to get out on the streets and provide that street medicine. Two, if we see students who are going into this field in the medical field, we can possibly uh, offer them um, maybe some credit to their schooling in order to do this kind of work, kind of like a military style. You know, you give us some time, uh, we'll help you with your affordability in your education. So I think that that's the difference. And then they can apply for grant you know, funding through this program and say, hey, we want to offer this, we want to address it. So that's the unique piece, the street medicine, the providers being able to be reimbursed and then offering, um, you know, some sort of education reimbursement that they can uh, apply for. It's very interesting. It's, uh, you know, you think about when, when there's always these campaigns uh, and you hear politicians uh, talk about having a fresh voice, um, you know, a change. It's like here... These are kind of different ways of thinking than I think we've always approached, I guess, the homelessness issue and maybe even some other issues. Um, so here, here's an example of just maybe we need to look at things differently, right? Yeah. So, you know, we, 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 we can know what does work, but oftentimes we get pigeonholed into it's the only lane or the only way. And we spend you know, tens of millions, if not hundreds of millions of dollars. And when we don't see uh, any outcome, you know, uh, we should probably pivot and change change the way we're thinking. And that's the other part of this legislation is that there is a report. This is a pilot program. Let's rethink these new ideas and then let's do a report out on it to see if it is working. Let's measure it. I mean, I think that that's fair to the American people and to Oregonians to say, is this a benefit to the problem? Is this going to help either your business, your community, your family member? And then how do we measure it and then report back? That's the accountability piece also uh, that I think is important to government is check in. Is it making sense? So it addresses all of those things. I wonder from your from your time in Washington and speaking with your colleagues, obviously in Oregon, the the the, the concept of homelessness is something that's talked about a lot. And I know there's some other Seattle, LA, and there's some other that's parts right. of the country. But what is what is the common reaction with your colleagues? I mean, does it seem like some of them don't really even recognize it as big of a problem as you see it as? Well, certainly we're being affected by it just because right outside the Portland metro area. And and I think it's been going on for far too long. Then when you added, uh, you know, the, the really the devastation of COVID, now the economy, uh, people are hurting, people are suffering. We're recognizing that there's more, again, diagnosis uh, there's more reasons why people are on the streets. Housing affordability, mental health issues, they don't know where to turn. 
drug addiction. And then when you have measure 110 add on to that, it might seem a little more prominent in the Portland metro area and then all of Oregon. If you go to Bend, Central Oregon, they're, they're, they're experiencing the exact same thing. And I think that that's failed policies, lack of leadership, and then uh, um, the patient care that hasn't been addressed maybe in a different way. So there's lots of pointing fingers we can all do, but people elected me to try to come to Washington, figure things out, move the ball down the field, and come up with new ideas and new solutions for the problems that matter most. We see it from moms worried about their kids and their community, drug addiction. We see it from communities, businesses who are saying, how can I keep my business open when I'm dealing with the homelessness crisis? And there's these issues that are not being triaged and cared for. And then we're seeing family owned businesses who've been there and they're trying uh, and they're having to close their doors after 20, 30, 40 years. So you're starting to see business groups look into it. We've been supported by lots of uh, nonprofits on this issue. And now we're seeing businesses call up to our office and say, hey, we might want to support this and endorse this. Why is that? Well, because they're communities and they've heard from them to say, we need some sort of help. This might be an answer that we haven't heard before. I, you know, you, again, I pointed out how I was interested in sort of the jobs workforce aspect of this. Um, you're also pushing for more careers in forestry and uh, in that as well. Obviously, we're still in wildfire season and nobody wants to close that door yet. But, um, you know, we're nearing the end of another wildfire season with a lot of wildfires that burned throughout our state, although I think knock on wood, it's been better than maybe we anticipated. I want to know how they're connected. How, you know, what do you want to see there um, in, in terms of creating more jobs and how that might be able to help us, you know, with our future wildfire seasons? Exactly. You know, I think one of the main focuses that as representatives, no matter where we're from, and th this other bill that you mentioned, I'm signed on with Marie Glusenkamp Perez from Washington. Why? Forest fires matter there as well. The West... We often uh, have these massive wildfires during fire season. We're concerned. We're always trying to measure how bad is it going to be. Well, I can tell you this. It doesn't matter if it's a good season or maybe not as bad. It's still bad for the people living there. It's still bad for the environment. It's still bad for lots of various reasons. So addressing um, some of our biggest priorities in Oregon, homelessness, wildfires. I hear that all the time. So you would think well, that's unique. Yes, it is unique to the West and it's unique to Oregon. So that's why those are priorities for me. How do we get more people in the field to understand what we're dealing with? Forest fires, fighting fires, the forestry uh, profession, understanding what it means to be a forester. Uh, there's not many foresters in Congress. Uh, so what we, we would like to make sure that we're educating the public on, would you like to go into this field because it matters for your home state? That's what we're offering, uh, some benefits and some encouragement and some education to draw more people into uh, the forestry uh, profession. We were talking about uh, veterans when when we first came on. Uh, obviously, a lot of veterans in your district and, um, and, and, and in the state of Oregon as well. What have you learned about the needs of veterans and, and what you think still needs to be done for veterans? Well, thank you. That, that's, I am so glad you asked about that. Um, you know, we've been trying to support our veterans in various bills and so forth. And for the, the Portland VA, we did accomplish that. You know, uh, five, over $500 million is going to go to the Portland VA. Uh, and that's going to be for a new facility, for upgrades of what they need, for new services. One of the issues, though, I hear is that that that's great for Portland. And oftentimes people just, veterans can't drive necessarily from one end of my district to Portland to get to the services. So some of the other things that we're looking into and focusing on is um, even basic call centers. You know, when they're making appointments for the VA, those are not easy to navigate. The agencies have really been uh, loaded down sometimes with bureaucracy. We want to shine a light on that and say, how do we make it easier for you? How do you get your prescriptions? How do you see your physician? This is one bill that we did. One of the other bills that we did for homeless veterans is uh, move that through that they can buy basic necessities, uh, really a stipend for oftentimes you hear they just need a phone. They just want to call a family member or they want to make an appointment for the VA and they haven't been able to do so. Uh, just their basic necessities uh, for, for if they're on the streets, and, and they'll get a small stipend to deal with just those everyday needs. You know, it's really not a handout. It's a hand up. These, these people fought for our country, and, and I'm going to fight for them as I serve our country in this capacity. I want to work hard for our veterans at all levels. 
Um, uh, we'll switch gears. Do you support the impeachment inquiry into President Biden? Well, certainly, I think the inquiries, uh, some people get confused about, is it an impeachment or is it an inquiry? To me, this is, you know, we've uncovered uh, you know, new information. Well, that usually begs another question. Oh, well, maybe there's more information. Well, that's another question. And I think that that's what our constituents are asking. Uh, let the investigation play out and an inquiry uh, allows for that. So supporting the inquiry is going to allow for us to have the information to know, is the president compromised? And I, that's where we stand, and we support that inquiry. So fair to say, we're far off from you making a decision on when you, whether you would vote to impeach President Oh, Biden. absolutely. This is just opening the, you know, there's a good uh, friend of mine here in Congress uh, from New York. Uh, he's a former detective. He's like, this is how we should do all investigations. You have to be able to find the information. And, and again, we've heard in our offices, people want to know what that information is. So we would support an inquiry. It has nothing to do with the impeachment uh, vote. It has to do with the inquiry. I, I, I know one thing that people in our area are concerned about is, uh, are we headed towards another government shutdown? And for someone who's relatively new to Congress, I'll ask you where, where, where you think we are headed if we can avoid it. But also, how can we avoid just having to have this conversation Every year, every two, you know, I just feel like we're always in this, are we ha going towards a government shutdown? Is a government shutdown looming? You know, what have you seen in your time to, to say that we can, we don't have to do this? Frustration. I'm glad that you asked that in, in kind of an exasperated voice of again, we're going to see it again. People should be frustrated by this. We saw it in 13, we saw it in 18, we're seeing it again. Uh, it shouldn't be a political football, right? We shouldn't get in this mess. The people want us to be accountable. We, I'm going to do everything I can not to shut down this government because I don't think that that's what Oregonians want, and I don't want to see that either. We did receive just the text about what this new uh, uh, bill could look like passing a continuing resolution. We won't see that till Thursday, so my office just got it. We're still reviewing the text on if this is a, a good uh, CR for you know 30 days or whatever has come up with, but I can tell you this on the most basic level. People do not want to see this government shut down. This will affect all Americans, all Oregonians. So I'm going to do everything I can uh, to avoid that. I but feel the like people this... should be mad. People should ask us. People should give us a call and say, yes, or, no, I'm not happy with this. What does it mean for us? So uh, I'll fill you in this week uh, when we're done. Yeah, I feel if like we're this done. is one of those things where people get frustrated with, the po with politics and politicians. You know what I mean? It's like, why do we... We all know Democrats and Republicans have different views on things, but does it have to be like this? Does does yeah. Congress have to function this way? Yeah, that's that's it adds to that bucket of why why do we even bother with Congress? They are not doing their job. That's what you hear, right? I, I remember thinking that before I was in Congress. Uh, you just wonder why would they put us in this position? It puts us in a, a very precarious position. It makes people very uncertain nervous, scared, all of the above, as they should. And so it's our job to get here, show up, do the work. And that's what I'm going to do this week to try to avoid a, sh a government shutdown. As we mentioned, this is the first time I'm getting a chance to really speak with you, even though you're somewhat of a veteran now, but my first chance. What have you learned? What have you learned in your, what, now year and a half? Well, almost two years, right? Oh, uh, no, nine months. So Oh, my uh, gosh, came on, yeah, January. Like, yeah, oh, yeah, January. Yeah, yeah. So I can't, my in... time doesn't work in my brain. <laughs> Probably for the election, you know, we look at, you know, back, it's but true. You know, nine months, it's gone very quickly. Um, I will tell you this, the goodness of this job and meeting my colleagues across the country. You have a wide variety, Democrats and Republicans alike, who are working hard every single day for their districts. When I wanted this job, it was to do the work as I did with mayor represent the people of Oregon, represent the people of my district, show up here, work hard every day, answer the accountability questions, understand how I vote, why I vote, why it matters um, to my district. That's my number one goal. People are doing that in their districts as well. So, and, the, and they're fine. And that is, I will tell you, 85% of the conference is like, is like me. Yes, we have others in the conference who, you know, maybe they have different ideas or a different ideology. And, and you have to know that when you're at a table. I think the key answer is to be at the table. We certainly don't want to be at the table. So I want to be at this table. I want to understand what the issues are. And then I want to move for the goodness of this country and for Oregonians. And that is not having a government shutdown. 
Overall, though, um, I'll tell you things move very fast. We, there are long days. We work hard and we should be focused on what Oregonians want. And when they call my office, district office or here, and they say this is what they care about, the economy, what's happening uh, with, with what's happening now. What are you doing for Oregon? And I'll tell you what we're doing for Oregon. Child care bills, the forestry bills, uh, the fentanyl bills, homelessness bills. We don't just have one job. And, but the number one job is care what happens in Oregon. And that's what I stay focused on.